Hello, I'm Retro Jules, and welcome to World of Tanks, and welcome to my garage. This is my LTTB, Russian Tier 7 light tank. A quick, agile, sneaky scouting tank with a very, very long cannon. It follows the MT-25, the little boy racer, cheeky, fast tank with the tiny pop-pop gun. And the LTTB follows very nicely as far as speed and acceleration are concerned. But it is a bigger tank with a longer silhouette. It has a bit of frontal armour of 90mm, which is by far the highest in its class, but still very easy to penetrate and not to be utilised directly. The 85mm cannon has a middle of the road penetration of 170mm and an acceptable damage of 180 with a nice quick reload of 5.1 seconds. It has one of the best aim times of 2 seconds and one of the most accurate cannons at 0.35. But its real one and only problem is its dreadful and frustrating gun depression of only 3 degrees, the worst in its class. It is one of the fastest tier 7 scout tanks with a top speed of 68 km per hour but with an excellent 700 brake horsepower engine it is by far the best at accelerating and getting up hills and its 48 degrees per second chassis rotation it's nicely maneuverable too. It has a view range of 390 meters which matches some of the other tier 7 lights but it is also 10 meters less than the top view range of the Walker Bulldog and the Speerpanzer, so you do need to be wary of that. Now on this tank, I carry my standard equipment for a light tank and it seemed to work okay for me. A camo net, binoculars and optics. And my overall feeling about this tank, this tank is very good at passive scouting with a good camo rating. It excels at active scouting and sneaking up on the enemy and circling them. But you have to be careful if you're sneaking around corners as it's very, very long cannon can be spotted by the enemy before your chassis follows closely behind. I found this tank very mediocre and the three degrees of gun depression has been a real problem and quite a handicap for me. It's quite playable and relatively easy to progress but in my eyes at tier 7 the Walker Bulldog, Speerpanzer 1C and the WZ-131 with its excellent penetration and damage and even that's got 5 degrees of gun depression are far superior tanks. But then passive playstyle is more my style of scouting and this can be a very active scout and I've seen it played very well. I've not kept this tank and I've transferred my crew into my new T-54 lightweight. So I've got three clips to show you. The first one is on mines and it'll show the depression issues of the cannon on this tank and I get myself in a position which really isn't suitable for this tank. The second clip is on the swamp just showing what a good run and gun tank this can be and then the third and final clip is on the American highway just to show you a well balanced game and this tank just doing its thing. It's a rainy day on mines. It's a tier 8 game. We're a tier 7 Russian light tank, so we're only one tier down, so that's good. Now I'm going to make a dash straight for E6. Not normally a place I would scout to because you normally meet other scouting tanks and it just ends up in a bit of a fracas and doesn't work out well for anybody but because I know I've got the speed and I'm on the right side of the map I think it's worth having a go at but it's not really a great place for this tank to be so while it's a really really good scouting and spotting position being up here is also really good for popping sneaky shots at the enemy but I do not have the gun depression to do it and it's a little bit of a problem So, great. So we've spotted four tanks and we've lost a quarter of our health already with one shot. 
and you will see as I'm sort of creeping up how high my reticle is and I just can't get it down on my targets. Had we been in a Walker Bulldog or the Speerpanzer 1C, we would have no problem in doing sneaky little shots over the top of that cliff. However, we're not. We're in the LTTB with its three degrees of gun depression. Right, we've got a Walker Bulldog over towards the lighthouse. And we get a shot in the back of that one. And I'm just going to stay in the middle here because our team are keeping the light tank at F5 at bay so nobody's going to come in and pester me. I've got free reign of the whole top here which is a fantastic situation to be in. I'm just in the wrong tank. And the only way I can get shots in is by really leaning over this, this cliff, exposing the whole of my tank. Oh, there's Artie. Get a shot in, and we get shot, and Artie tries to get a shot in. And we're down to just over half our health, and another shot in. We're below half health now. And I'm trying to use the bushes, and effectively all I can really do up here is, is passive scout. And we've, we've spotted eight enemies, so we've, we've, we've done a good bit of spotting here. But it would be nice to be able to put shots in too. This is where I'd be, I'd be quite happy in my Speerpanzer 1C with my little autoloader, popping sets of three shots in without hardly exposing the tank at all. But then Speerpanzer 1C is a lot slower, so the chances are I wouldn't have got into this position first anyway. The LTTB has definitely got the speed and acceleration to get to places on the map. So we've got reinforcements up here now, so I'm not the only target, which is nice. So hopefully when I try and peer over the cliff, the enemy won't be looking at just me. So we've got an Indian Panzer at the back, and just see how high that reticle is. And we've got a little bit of frontal armour on the LTTB, and as you saw, it just bounced that shot nicely. So we've got the AMX right at the back, and that would normally be quite an easy shot, and I just cannot get a position at all. And the only way I'm going to do it is push half my tank out over the cliff and expose myself. And I do that to try and get some shots in the T-34. Get a shot in. And we take a shot from the left, but I'm going to just stay there and try and get another shot in. Wasn't quite enough to take the tank out. But our team finished the T-34 off. Our T is still potting shots all over the place. Be really nice to take Artie out. And I'm not watching the map here, but at F5, there's a heavy coming in behind us, and I'm completely unaware of it until it's a little bit too late. So I'm the only tank up here now, and there's the shot in the back for me not watching the map. There's the heavy, an IS3. Quick track repair. And a nosedive and get myself out of trouble. Right, Artie's reappeared. And he's still onto us. So I'm kind of thinking that my mission now is to really try and take Artie out. And I just went up. Ah, there's a medium up there, which I wasn't aware of. So just park here for a bit of safety. And the plan is now to just come around the corner corner sorry and put one in that Indian Panzer and yeah again that gun depression coming up the hill chances are we could have got a shot in earlier had we had a bit more gun depression so there we are a crisping wreck I mean we've done okay we, we spotted eight tanks four assisted we've got six penetrating shots and a critical but just not a good position for the LTTB to be in So we'll just fast forward the end of the game, because we do win the game. You don't want to sit here and watch my crisping wreck of a tank 
looking all sad and black and sooty and destroyed. And we'll get to the end of the game just to show you the outcome of that game. But what I wanted to show you in this game was was the the lack of gun depression and how you have to think about where you're going to put this tank to be effective. So there we go, we won the game. How did we do? 22,000 silver, yeah, not great. 2,800 XP with the first one of the day, so okay, did a thousand damage. Got a class three mastery badge. And overall, just a very average game, um, but uh, didn't position our tank too well or really consider how to play this map with this tank. So we're on Swamp and we're starting this game a little way in and I've got myself into a nice position at G8 which is quite a good spotting point. Uh, it's a tier 8 game, we're a tier 7 light tank so again we're only one tier down so that really really helps. And I'm just going to sit here for a little while and see what spotting I can do in the bush with my camo net on and my binoculars. So this second clip that I'm showing you is probably to show you how the LTTB should be played and can be played and where it excels as a run and gun tank as it is quite accurate on the move. But you do have to be careful because even though you've got the 15 degrees of gun elevation You've only got the three of depression, and when you're hitting lumps and bumps, sometimes that can really throw your reticle out, as you can see as I hit these hills here. So just see if we can get a side shot on the Liberté. We get an auto-aim on the Jagdpanzer, and we take the Jagdpanzer out. And that Yak Panzer was a tier below us, so that was quite handy. So we're not going to have any real penetration issues in this game. So our team are sweeping round at A8. And I'm going to see what supporting I can do from over here. Dreadful auto aim. Got a Borsig. Missed the poor sick, but I destroyed the tank that was behind it that I wasn't even aiming at, so that was handy. Right, we've got an M6. Now he's got an absolute bulletproof turret. Because he's the mutant 6. So I'm just going to keep aiming at the chassis. And we're just going to nibble away at his health. Not the slightest bit interested in us. And we get the final shot in and finish the tank off. And already four minutes into the game and we're on three kills. So we'll go and help with the Borsig if we can. See if we can run round the back here. We come steaming round at 65 kilometers an hour. And there we go, a nice accurate shot on the move, we don't even stop, we carry on. And that's where this tank can really, really excel, as it's run and gun, zip in, shoot and disappear. And again we're going to do that with the Panther, we're shooting on the move, he bounces a shot, our second shot on the move goes in, there's no way he's got the Traverse to keep up with us, we're going to keep putting the shots in. Oh, we miss, and our team finish the tank off. But you can just see by circling there, he was never going to get a shot in. Right, got a VK who looks like they're not playing. And it always feels like you're cheating when you're doing this, but the only way we're going to win is by destroying all the tanks. And if it's just sat there, it'd be rude not to shoot it. And there we go, somebody finishes that tank off. And now it's the RT hunt. So we spotted two, got four assisted, 12 penetrating shots, four critical, two assisting, and we destroyed four tanks in this game. And we win in five minutes. A very quick game. So how did we do overall? Just under 54,000 silver. Excellent result. 2,000 XP on the... F 
without a first win of the day, so straight XP with a couple of missions and a class 2 mastery. And how do we come overall? We came top. And finally, it's a beautiful day on highway. Again, it's a tier 8 game and we are still a tier 7 Russian light tank. And this map will show you just how this tank can work as an overall passive scouting tank and also as an active scouting tank. And we are heading for about G8. It's quite a way forward, but a really good spotting point to catch the enemy going along the J line into the city. Now you may be thinking that I've shown you another tier 8 game and these games have only ever been one tier down. Well, you know as well as I do that if you're only one tier down, you generally do quite well and you actually stand a chance in the game. This tank will quite happily see tier 9 tanks and you have to work a lot harder and being a lot more careful. And I could show you a lot of those games where I did really rubbish, but I'm thinking you probably want to see the games where I do quite well and where the tank is effective. So we're going to sit in this bush and we've spotted an ISU and we're just going to sit here. We are a little bit exposed but there is a ridge that we can just run down to just to our right and get a little bit of protection if we get spotted and we do get spotted. Not sure what by. So we're going to run down to here and there's this nice little embankment that we can sort of just use as a bit of cover. So I'm just going to stick myself in another bush, change location, try and work out what's spotting me, or what spotted me. Camo net on, binoculars on. So our team are pouring into the city nicely. We've got good coverage on the map actually. We've got me in the middle, we've got a couple of mediums in a mid position. We've got really good coverage. No lemming trains on this video, hurrah. Now I've been spotted and highlighted and I am taking shots all over the place from the right hand side and I'm just going to keep moving backwards and forwards. I don't actually know if this little embankment is high enough to protect me, which is why I keep moving. And ah, there's a light tank just briefly appeared down in the riverbed. There we are at G4. That's probably what's lit me up. I'm just going to be careful here. Doesn't look like RT are onto me or interested in me, so that's that's good. So yeah, just a little just trying to do a little SOS here, just to sort of say I'm a little bit of a sticky position here, guys. Because as soon as I break from here, I'm gonna be very visible. Yes, you're right, I should fall back. I want to fall back, but I'm not actually sure how I'm gonna do that without getting completely annihilated by that lot up there and they're the guys that are just taking shots at me left right and centre and they've taken a shot at my cannon so I'm gonna lose accuracy now I've not done anything with the cannon and I can't remember in this gameplay whether it's because I didn't notice it or I didn't think it was gonna make too much of a difference I wanted to save my repair kit there's the light tank that was causing me such an issue. So I'm just going to get around the corner here and just try and find a safe spot. We're out of trouble and we haven't lost any health. But I'm still getting spotted and we get one in the tiger. So we had, we had a good little passive location over there in the bush and we, we spotted four of the enemy. They've spotted us. And now I'm uh, taking shots from the tiger. I'm not in a position I'd really like to be in, but that's the risk you take sometimes for playing the center of the map. Oh, we track the tiger. And there we go, I decide to repair my gun because it looks like my gun is going to be coming into play in this game after all. Oh, an IS is. Oh, the, uh, now the IS is steaming in for me. Tracks me. Tracks up. Let's go. 
track repaired. Our enemy, our team, sorry, are onto the IS, but he's really got a thing for me. And this is where the run and gun LTTB. We're just going to circle around the IS. And we've got the speed. And there we go. We finish off the IS with a nice shot in the engine. And another heavy, an M6 coming in for us. Misses his shot. We get a bounce off the uh, upper glacis again. Again, that little bit of little bit of armor at an angle gets us out of trouble. Target locked. So that 90 millimeters of armor on the front, while you can't sit there and utilize it, it is very handy if you're retreating at angles and you do get these little lucky bounces. And I far do prefer a bounce than a penetration as far as my tank's concerned. So we've got a medium, a heavy and a tank destroyer up on the hill there. The French heavy keeps sort of dipping down behind the hill. I'm just trying to sort of keep everyone lit up, stay in the centre of the map and stay out of trouble all at the same time. There's the French heavy. Get a nice auto aim in. There we go. Get one in the tracks. Get one straight in. Try and finish off the ARL. No idea where that shot went. No idea where that shot went. I where are these shots going? And he's behind the hill now. That would be a good shot to get that. I don't think we've got the accuracy for that. Just trying to see if we could get it cheeky shot in the cupola. So the light tank is still down in the riverbed. We've got a VK over on the left. Oh, we get a shot there. The medium up on the hill is retreating. VK's gone. So I'm not going to take any shots from the left now, so I'm quite happy to go in and try and help with the VK. The tank destroyer is in the city, so that's not a threat. Just need to keep an eye on Artie. But there's no way Artie's going to get me on the move. There's Artie. Do we go for the T-43 or do we go for Artie? That's a decision made for us. We go for Artie. One shot in. We just need another shot. And... Yeah, not a lot of arty could do that. Not going to enter the cap. Don't want the air raid siren going off. Not going to worry about the tank destroyer in the city. There's two heavies going in for that tank. I'm going to hunt the light tank. As is everybody else. And nobody's looking particularly high on their health. We've all taken a bit of a battering in this game. There it is. It's a bulldog. Oh, we track him. Oh, that was handy. He's a sitting duck now. We'll just keep putting the shots in. Yeah, I'm over here, mate. Yeah, hello. Oh, you missed that one. Another shot in. Yeah, you keep putting the shots in. I'm going to finish you off before you finish me. There we go. So, spotted five. Nine penetrating shots. Sorry, nine assisted. Fourteen penetrating shots. Overall, just a good scouting game for the LTTB with some active scouting and some passive scouting and some good supporting. Class 1 Mastery Badge, 48,000 silver and just under 6,000 XP with a few missions. And we came top with our three tank kills. So there you have the Russian LTTB, the Tier 7 Light Tank. It, it is a very playable tank. You can have some excellent games in it. You can have some rubbish games in it. I did find that I did struggle a lot with the three degrees of gun depression. And at tier seven, I did have, and I do have, better light tanks to play. And that's pretty much the only reason why I didn't keep this tank.